Okay. Greetings and welcome to episode 22 of One Bottle Each. I'm joined today by my guest, Pepino D'Agostino. Pepino is a fingerstyle guitar player based in the Bay Area of California. He's been there for about 30 years and arrived from Italy. Pepino, thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome, Gabe. I'm very excited to be with you and your listeners. How are you? I'm good. You know, I'm hanging in there. You know, um, I started playing concerts. I play four gigs in the past 10 days and I have uh, about four more coming up and then I'll be on the East Coast uh, at the end of August. So, you know, things are, you know, starting again. Hopefully I will continue to to, uh, play live. We'll see. Let's hope so. How did that, you know, normally you're on the road all the time. How did that first gig back feel? Was it extra excitement for you? Yeah, it was, I was very happy, you know, to have, there's nothing like, you know, a live audience. I mean, I, I've done some live stream concerts, you know, in front of a camera using, you know, technology and do, you know, these live streams, but it's not the same, you know, yeah, people can call you and, you know, chat on Facebook and let you know that they're there and it's nice, but you know, you're playing in front of a camera. I mean, it's, when you have an audience, you can feel them, you can feel them and there's an answer, you know, there's banters on stage and, um, and so it's completely different. And, and that's what I've done for 40 years. So, you know, this past year and a half has been really difficult in that sense, not having a, a real relationship you know, with an audience, you know, so, but now hopefully things will start again. I really hope. Yeah. I, I, I do too. So I, I do too. Very, very much so. So a uh, finger style guitarist, I, I introduced you as uh, some of our viewers, you know, they may not know what that means. So can you define or describe, you know, exactly what a finger style guitarist is? Yeah. Yeah. So I can tell you, you probably, your, your, your uh, viewers know what is this. This is a pick, right? This is a pick, and, and so when yeah. you play the guitar with the pick, you know, you hold the pick like this, right? And then you strum. But finger style is playing with your fingers. And when you play, I use my fingers. So when you play with your fingers, it's more kind of a kind of yeah polyphonics because you can play multiple strings at the same time. With the pick, you can play. Generally speaking, you can play one string at the time, or you can brush across the strings and strum across the strings. Uh, with uh, and while with you know finger style, you can play multiple string at the same time and also you can play single lines so so did you start out when you first picked up a guitar did you immediately start out playing finger style or is that something that you you moved into after a period of playing with a pick good question well i think i started playing with the pick because i learned from my cousin and um, my cousin peppino same name good, good uh, name solid name yeah, and and uh, I think I, I I think I started playing just strumming, and I was playing just Italian songs, you know, that were popular on the radio. I mean, I was ten years old, and I think um, probably when I was eighteen or seventeen, I discovered you know people like that were playing with you know finger style technique, and so I was curious, and I switched to that. So you know, since then. I've been playing with my fingers, but also with the pick. In fact, um, I'll be playing, uh, I'm, I'm doing this tour with Gian Riley. He's a, a wonderful composer and um, he's kind of, he suggested me to play with the pick for one of the, the tunes. And so mm-hmm. I, I've been practicing with, actually with the thumb pick. This is another thing that finger style player use. So this is, is called thumb pick and you put it around the thumb and, and so then then as you can see then this becomes like a pick so you can do or play like so you can have like a hybrid technique where you use the thumb pick as a pick and then you can play with the other fingers as well so i see 
All kinds so, of crazy stuff. <laughs> so is his, he, he, him asking you to play with a pick on a particular tune, is that because he's looking for you to achieve a certain sound? Excellent. Yeah, he wants, he wants a certain sound. And, um, and it is a different sound when you play with the pick, you know. So he's the composer of this piece that he actually wrote for the two of us. Um, you know, it, it, the occasion was this tour that we're, we're doing. By the way, you know, he's, he's, he's a wonderful composer and his name is Gian Riley. And his father, Terry Riley, is one of the most uh, celebrated um, composers um, in the world. Terry Riley is uh, the father of uh, minimalism. And ah, okay. Yeah, so it's, you know, minimalism is the style of music that you know the other artists like uh, Philip Glass or Steve Reich or um, John Adams. They're kind of a, in that realm, but you know, um, it's wonderful to play with Gian and you know use the pick. And I'm you know, uh, he said you should play with the pick. I said okay. Give me some wine and I'll do it. Yes. Yeah. Hey, sp spread your wings a little bit, right? So, yeah. so speaking of composing, you know, how, how far into playing guitar did you compose your first piece of music? Um, I was probably the very first week that I got a guitar. I, I even remember the first piece. Um, I wanna, you want to hear this? Let's go, yeah. yeah. It goes. You got the gist, right? I do, yeah. <laughs> and so within a week of having a guitar and uh, you just went off and running from there and you just, uh, you know, yeah. where you, you know, you said you started playing along with popular Italian songs, but then you start composing. So how soon before you're mostly playing your, your own stuff? You know, I, I started writing uh, probably I, I was 17 or 18 or even earlier, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I was just uh, um, interested in creating my own, my own music very early on. And I don't know why, but I thought that was cool to write your own, your own music, you know, and I, I've been, you know, mainly, you know, when they asked me, what, 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 who are you? I mean, and I'm a, I'm a steel string guitar player, composer. I write, I, and I compose my music and I perform my music for audiences. Yeah. I play, uh, occasionally I cover a song or something or an instrumental piece. Like, you know, I play like a Beatles medley, for instance. People like that, but, you know, I, I think that uh, what I really like to do is just to, to play my own music for people. Sure. And w one of the things that, you know, has always drawn me to your music is, uh, you know, you've got, I, I imagine one of the reasons you wanted to compose music um, well, is because you, you have such diverse influences um, of music from all over the world that, that come out in your music in, in little bits and pieces. So I imagine for you, you wanted to compose because you probably, even if it was subconscious, you wanted to bring all these elements together, I think. It becomes, it's, it's a natural thing. You know, I, I'm not aware of that, but I, consciously aware of, uh, I'm not consciously aware of that, but when I, um, you know, when I write, obviously, you know, there are influences and I, and I love all kinds of styles of music. So when I, when I write, sometimes a piece is, sounds like, you know, like a movie soundtrack, cause I love movie soundtracks. Sometimes it sounds a little like country music, or sometimes it could be like, like a, a little bit reminiscent of flamenco or, so yeah, there's um, you know there's beauty in all kinds of styles, you know, which is great, and that and I love that you embrace that um, that you have that diversity in what you do. Thank you. <laughs> so so you have a piece of music that you've prepared uh, to play for yeah. us. Tell us yeah. what it is and a little bit about it, and feel free to play it when you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, so first of all, you know, one of the things that I do, I, I use open tunings, which means I tune the guitar in a different way. In this case, it's a C minor uh, tuning. So, so when you strum all the strings, you have a C minor chord. And so I like using open tunings because there's, you know, open strings that reverberates and, and uh, basically overlap other, other notes. So there's uh, it's almost like a little bit like a piano, you know, where you can, you know, have sustain in the notes because the strings are open, you know, so that's, it's very, it's very interesting. So the piece that I'm going to play for you, Gabe and your and your listeners is a piece that I is is from my latest CD called Connection, which is uh, I have a copy here. It's a strange cover. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's a cool cover and uh, it's a terrific album. Yeah, thank you. So I this is a piece that I wrote for a colleague friend of mine that unfortunately is no longer on this planet. So it's a kind of a uh, a piece that I wrote to honor him. His name was Buster B. Jones. And, you know, this this guitarist, this man was really well known for playing kind of a Chet Atkins, Jerry Reed, a very fast uh, runs, scales, and he was known for his speed. You'll notice that at the end of the piece, my speed will increase. And that was my kind of a... Um, because it, it was his trademark, so I, I, I was trying to honor him, and um, by 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 you know, composing this piece, which is called Buster. Buster. His name was his, not, his name was Buster B. Jones. Cool. So Buster. Here we go.
Beautiful. Thank you. So speaking of guitarists and guitars, uh, I believe the guitar you're playing is, is that your model? Yeah, it is. It's a Pepino D'Agostino signature model made by Seagull. You can see the, the Seagull there, probably. Yeah. Let's yeah. Yeah. And uh, here, you can see it better this way. See this right there, the Seagull on the headstock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah but it's a guitar that I designed about 25 years ago. And this is actually the revised model. And, and uh, this guitar actually won quite a few awards. And I'm very proud of this and the work that they did. Um, uh, um, what I like the most is that this guitar is inexpensive. Uh, and I asked them to write to, to create an instrument that was not like ten thousand dollars. This guitar mm -hmm. is, you know, probably yeah, around seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars. And it's wonderful. There's also an electronic here. You can plug the guitar bracing. It's really a wonderful instrument to hold and it sounds really nice and I'm very happy with it. it it sounds fantastic, and I know I've seen you play it in person, and it you know it sounds even even nicer when you're a, a couple of feet away. <laughs> the show's called One Bottle Each, so so you know we have to drink some wine, and I chose Ironstone. Uh, they're from Lodi, California. This is their Reserve Zinfandel, and the reason I I chose uh, this wine, I, I knew immediately I was going to choose Zinfandel because I know that you're a Zinfandel lover. And I, I thought, what more appropriate uh, for us to drink on on this show, this episode, than some Zin? What um, when did you first discover Zinfandel? Um, you know, here in California, I actually was not aware of this this wine, this kind of wine. But then I found out that you know, in Italy, in Italy we call it Primitivo. Yeah. And is is that originally from Croatia, the the grape? I mean, yeah. Yeah, the parent the parent is from Croatia, and Primitivo and Zinfandel are both children of of, of the Croatian grape. Okay, so uh, I thought for a long time there was uh, Italian, the Primitivo originated at Zinfandel, but actually is from Croatia. Huh? Yeah, yeah, they both came from from Croatia. Huh. What do you mean both? I don't understand that. Uh, so. They're nearly the same grape. They're they're both uh, they're different um, clones of the of the Croatian grape, ah. and so there's the Croatian grape, and then Primitivo is the child that ended up in Italy, and Zinfandel is the child that ended up in the United States. I see. So they're 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 closely related, but they're not exactly the same. You'll see. There's even wineries in California which grow Zinfandel, and then they've brought over cuttings of Primitivo from Italy, and they'll grow them side by side. And also the reverse, a couple of months ago, I tasted a Zinfandel from Italy that was from a, a clone that came from uh, Northern California, from Sonoma County. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's, a, that's the beauty of, about wine. You know, there's all this mixed and, you know, people mix stuff and, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was lucky because I grew up in Italy with that Italian great wine and I live in California, not far from Napa. So I love wines, you know. So you've been surrounded by wine your whole life? Pretty much. You know, and my father, there's a tradition in Calabria when a, a newborn, uh, they, they put him in a, in a bathtub on wine in Calabria. Ah, oh, wow. That's, I don't know if they still do it. My, when my father was a, a young kid, that's what they did to him. So it's sort of a, a baptism by wine. Yes. That was a right. tradition in Calabria. So I thought these people are smart, you know. Yeah, well, get started early, man. So, <laughs> so, so what, is it, what is it about Zinfandel when you drink it that you know, makes you happy? Um, you know, just... You know, I'm not a wine expert. I mean, I know what I like. It's just, yeah. Um, I just like the taste, you know. And I like, you know, uh, Zinfandel that are on the on the sweet side, like you know, Rambauer is kind of sweet. I, I I never tried this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna taste it now. It's yeah, there's a, a Zinfandel. You know, uh, is on the fruitier side often. So I guess that's what's appealing to you. 
So yeah, this uh, this is from Ironstone, like I said, in Lodi. It's a twenty-five dollar bottle of wine retail. You probably find it for a couple dollars less on the shelf. It's good. I like M- it. Mostly Zin with thirteen uh, percent Petit Syrah blended in. Okay. Hmm. I mean, what this will go well with, um, you know, with pasta, uh, red sauce. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's very well, good. One of the things about wine that I love, and, you know, I'm thinking back to, you know, when you, before you started playing the, the song, the Buster song tune, um, you're talking about open tunings and you said how the uh, the notes sustain longer. And and one of the things I love about tasting wine is, you know, detecting, you know, the whole palate and how long the finish is and how long those flavors sustain in your mouth. So I don't know, to me, that's one of the, one of the places that music and wine kind of intersect a little bit. <laughs> Very good analogy. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Salute, my brother. Salute, fratello. Mm. Mm. So, oh, nice. You know, normally, like you said, you know, you're starting to get back out on the road. But normally, you know, you're on the road, you know, normal times, you're on the road a lot, all over the world. Do you look, when you're out there, is wine something that you look for? Do you think, hey, I'm in such and such a place now let me see whether it's in the restaurant or whether you have a chance to actually go tasting do you do you look for different wines when you're on the road um i don't look for wines but i'm happy if at the end of the concert i don't drink before the concert if i can have a nice bottle of wine i'm happy you know it's i don't drink a lot but you know one glass it's good enough for me and if I can have a glass of good red wine at the end, it can be also white wine, but mainly red wine, you know, it makes me happy. It makes me happy to be, you know, like when I play, you know, sometimes I play house concerts and I, and I can have a glass of wine with some of the audience there. It makes me happy. It's, um, you know, it's something that has been done for thousands of years and it really brings people together. Wine, it's, um, and eating together is special, you know, makes humans close to each other, you know, and, and if the wine is good, you know, it's, uh, it's even better. <laughs> Sometimes yes. it's not always good. At the end of a gig, they bring a bottle of mediocre wine and I taste it and I, I feel funny because, you know, the promoter is there and I, and, oh, good, good. And then, you know, I, you know, I, I know what I like. And, yeah, you, you smile and you suck it up. But then, you know, what you have to do is the next time you go back to the same place, you have to specify what wine you want in your rider. Yeah, or I I can say, hey, shut up at your face and drink my wine. I'm not going to drink your wine, okay? Exactly. But going back to what you were saying about, you know, the having the wine and the food together, people bring bringing people together, that social aspect. But that's, again, where music connects, because when you when we're all together in a room, seeing music, listening to music, um, that also brings us together. And then if you can add in that you can have a drink before, during, after with the other audience members and the performer and maybe share a snack, it's, that's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's life. Good life. The good life. The good life. Cheers. 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 So, uh, growing up in Italy, was your family one of the families that made their own wine? No. No. And uh, I didn't know anyone that made their own wine. I don't even know that it was possible to make, as an individual, your own wine. No. Uh, I discovered that later on. But no, my family didn't make their, their wine. I know that. I, I have friends that make their wines here. And also, now I know people in Italy. Um, but uh, no. So I, I have no, no yeah. experience. Yeah. So what did, what did you drink? Like, what, in, in where you grew up, what was the dominant wine or grape or in your region of Italy? I grew up in Piemonte, Piedmont. So, you know, in Piemonte, there's a lot of different wines. Barbera, oh, sure. Yeah. Barbera, Barolo, Fresa, Dolc- Dolcetto, uh, Barbaresco. There's so many different wines because you know there's the Monferrato area is it's very it's one of the, it, one of the it's best, yeah one of the greatest areas yeah it's it, that's an incredible incredible region for wines and then in the whites too 
you know? Yeah. But there's some really lovely whites, too, that don't get quite as much attention as the reds do because, you know, Barolo's the king. So everybody wants to talk about the Barolo. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you get the others as well. Yeah. And, you know, um, talking about red wines, you know, in Italy, the wines in general are, you know, good wines. You can buy a good bottle of wine for like seven, ten euros or really a good bottle that sure. here will cost 30, 30 dollars. I mean, I'm a big fan of Lambrusco. I love Lambrusco, you know, cold Lambrusco makes me happy, you know, it's, it's like freezy and, you know, and it's well, joyous, it's joyous. Exactly. So what, what put that desire in you to come to the States and did you immediately know you were going to go to the Bay Area? Well, it was uh, a combination of, I, I, I met a, a, a girl and I just followed her. It didn't huh. work out with her, but it was that plus my desire to, you know, I always thought, I mean, in America, you know, there's all, in, you know, there's all kinds of stereotypes in, about America. And that I mean in the in the eighties, late seventies, about the music is great, you know, it's uh the, the streets are paved with gold. There, there were all kinds of stereotypes that actually you know became kind of obvious to me that were not true, you know, but there's there was still, you know, in me when I moved here, there was that, you know, kind of the dream, the, the American dream. Yeah. And in many ways, yeah, I achieved that because, you know, I make a living playing music, which is, you know, it's kind of difficult, you know, to do that. And I realized that and I was lucky enough to do it, partially because maybe I'm foreign and here, you know, they hear my name, Pepino D'Agostino. It's kind of an exotic name. And let's yeah. listen to this guy. So, I mean, I'm very grateful to this country, you know, for I, I got uh, and um very grateful to you know my wife and the people that i met here and it feels like a miracle to me really when i think about it you know yeah were, were you able to uh make a living in music immediately when you moved to the u.s or did you have to did it take a while and you have to work a straight job for for a bit yeah well i, I for very little i was um i just did some painting, painting rooms, and oh, yeah. went in restaurant. I was a disaster. I was fired in a restaurant immediately. Uh, and also, I I painted this room, and I remember this was a, a wonderful blind lady. She but she was blind, and at the end of my job, she said, "Wonderful job." And but I don't know, you know, if uh, yeah. I really did a wonderful job. But um, so I did that. I sold vegetables out of a truck. Uh, on 101 uh, North uh, California, I sold, you know, vegetables and yeah. that. Uh, what else did I do? I play in the streets a lot, play music in the streets of San Francisco, Fisherman's Wharf, the Connery, and I made some money that way. And then I, but I was lucky because almost immediately I started playing little clubs and I started, you know, making a living playing music. And then I was lucky because I met actually a musician that recommended his agent. And so I contacted this agent in New York and, and I got my first record contract in 1986. And then everything started that way. And I've been, I've been lucky enough to make a living, you know, playing steel string guitar and teaching guitar. And so, I mean, I feel very lucky and I, I am grateful. Yeah. Well, we're, we're those of us who get to hear you and see you play, are lucky to, to hear that and those of you who are those of us who are lucky enough to call you our friends are even luckier <laughs> well gabe I, you know you're you're a wonderful man and i remember when you came here in california and i took that trip with you at rambauer it was just wonderful you you were so knowledgeable and and you showed me a, a very nice time there meeting the the winemaker and also it was great also to have pizza with you yeah. that night afterwards. And uh, and you were staying in this beautiful place. And uh, it was great. I hope we can do that again. You know, I we, really we, love we, you. We will you definitely know? do it again. And don't forget, at the end of the night, then you, you took me to a, a harp concert. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, and that know, was incredible. And you know what? These people, I just play at their place. 
I just play in Oregon because they live in Oregon. And uh, oh, okay. we had a, a lovely time. They organized a concert for me and Gian and, and it was wonderful. And they had good wine there. We opened a bottle of wine that was good. A lot of it's terrific wine in Oregon. It's all connected, you know? It is. Well, hey, listen, I want to say thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to drink a little more of this. And you should. Cheers finish to your, finish to the bottle before the night is through. Maybe share some with Donna. Salute. Okay. Salute.